Gali sangi mu chifechi wewe po burunje. Tuline bisule yu mulembe. Science Laboratory. Sakoni Computer Lab. Wamune. She gives you her number. But your pen didn't work. And the bus is gone. Get a pen you can rely on. Big Crystal, the long-lasting pen with perfect ink flow. Wamune. Green Hill Academy has high standards of learning and the teachers are very good. They give you a sense of belonging. Green Hill has helped me to discover my talent. The environment is good. Encourage our children to be excellent. Wamune. Kumbu University. A private chartered university that offers world class education at all levels, including certificates, diplomas, bachelor's, and master's degrees. Our courses include computing and IT, law, journalism, nursing, business administration, education, fashion and design, and many more. Admissions for the August 2020 intake are still open. Will you join us? Wamune. Kids Kingdom Kindergarten and Daycare. So many of you have to go. Oh, Musa Direct or Mwana or Gendo Kore Bibio. If you have any Sabiabana, you're not Musi. To be in a Atengabana with Basanya Wagazino, Jukira, Security and Car, Amasomer Gunagari Mutukomera, Abasome Sabetulina, Bakukumubana, Abana Tuari Sabrunji Yamunang, Twina main campus of Dona Gallery, Nawaka Sabu Don Junior. Yes, uh, a good morning to you, um, fellow Ugandans. Uh, we are here yet for another interesting lesson, I believe. To the candidates there watching and the students, I want to welcome you this Saturday morning. And I hope you're ready up and um, expectant for our continuous lesson on capacitors. The teacher is still Mr. Kakuru, and the, uh, the content is physics paper two. Um, without wasting time, let us uh, proceed with our lesson. Uh, first of all, we had made an introduction on capacitors, and we said that a capacitor is a device that stores electrical, elect stores charge, and we saw uh, that the symbol for the capacitor is a simple um, two parallel lines. And we mentioned in particular that uh, students can mistakenly confuse this with um, the symbol, the circuit symbol for a, a cell. But the distinction is that for the capacitor, the plates, actually these are called plates. We may draw them like this, but ideally they should be of that nature. Connected to a circuit and oppositely charged. Oppositely charged. One can be positive, the other one can be negative. Um, we, towards the end, we are supposed to now look at the actual definition of a capacitor but before that i remember uh, sharing with you the expression and saying that if c represents capacitance therefore if we make it to the subject we would get that as the expression because of the fact that um, the plates are oppositely charged that means that if you have a charge here, it will be positive Q, and the charge here would be negative 2. In the definition for capacitance, we use the word magnitude. We use the word magnitude, and I will now take you to the first question of the day, which is define capacitance. Define capacitance.
So we define capacitance as the ratio of the magnitude of the charge on either plate of the capacitor to the ratio of the magnitude of charge on either plate of the capacitor to the potential difference across the plates. Capacitance uh, will be defined Yes, the ratio of the charge, of the magnitude of the charge on either plate of the capacitor to the potential difference across the plates. I have underlined the word magnitude because, um, because I have told you that capacitors are oppositely charged and therefore they are oppositely charged but with the same value and therefore it is important that we actually emphasize that we are using the magnitude. That means, therefore, we take out of context the, the sign of the charge on the capacitor. <coughs> and uh, I have already told you by formula that if we look at charge, from charge is equal to CV, we have said C is equal to Q over V. I usually emphasize that once you know the expression, this is Q, once you know the expression, uh, you should be able once you know the expression, you should be able to actually derive the definition from here. If, uh, as I usually tell my students, if you're English, is very okay. If your English is very okay. One, you know that ratio goes with the word two. That's why we say ratio of the magnitude of charge on either plates of the capacitor. Two. Even in English, you know that ratio goes with two later. Two, the PD. And it is encouraged that students should avoid using PD, short form, here in the definition. We said capacitance is measured in units. The units for capacitance can now be generated. Um, in one of my, of my colleagues' lessons, we talked about dimensions. And uh, if we use that simple knowledge, we can derive units here and say the units of charge are corums and the units of PD are volts. And therefore, the units for capacitance will become corums per volt. However, the SI unit, the SI unit of capacitance is a farad, is a farad denoted with symbol capital F. And uh, just like we talk about money and we use the K language, uh, those of you who are students know that language better, uh, with capacitance we have smaller units. Smaller units of capacitance are in three categories um, that we actually will look at. Other units of capacitance, um, we have what we call microfarads. And this is written as micro F. And one microfarad is actually one times 10, the negative 6 of a farad. We have Nanofarads from the nanogon, for those of you who remember pentagons, and this is 1 times 10 to the negative 9 of a farad, and we have pico, pf, and this is 1 times 10 
the negative 12 of a farad. So a question can be set for a student and they are using a non-farad or a picofarad or a microfarad. This symbol, we have seen it before um, under electrostatics and you should be know, knowing that it represents micro. Now, uh, capacitance, as we may be aware, can also be measured. It can be measured and uh, we are going to look at methods of comparing capacitors but before we look at the methods of comparing capacitance, uh, we talked about uh, factors that affect capacitance of a capacitor briefly last time. Um, if I may remind you, um, we talked about three factors. Factors that affect capacitance. I'll summarize them, given that we talked about them last time. We talked about um, the surface area, and we say that capacitance um, can vary directly proportional to the area. We talked about um, the space between the plates, and we said capacitance can be uh, affected by the distance between the, the plates, and we talked about the directory constant, and we said capacitance can be affected by the material of the dielectric that is placed in between the capacitors. We even talked about the advantages or the uses of, of dielectrics, and we defined uh, a dielectric constant. So if we merge these three, we usually come up with an expression that actually can relate um, capacitance with these three factors we come up with that expression that we may partly be able to use later in the calculations. <coughs> um, the symbol that you see written as a, 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 a reflected three is permittivity of free space. Permittivity of free space. So they can ask you to list down three factors that affect capacitance of a capacitor. Uh, you should be in position to actually list them down. Um, to wind up that emphasis on the factors, uh, someone may say, but how do they, uh, what is D? Uh, if these are our capacitor plates, and um, I want to indicate that dielectric, which we said is a material that actually separates the plates of the capacitor, and it does not have any conduction at all. Uh, this would be the dielectric material. And uh, this spacing is the one we are saying is the D. And then the surface area of the capacitors, if you have drawn the shape in that format, then this would be the surface area uh, of the capacitors. The area would be ideally that. Those, of course, are normally given in a, in a question if they are to be used. For example, for free air or free space, uh, the value of the dielectric is known. Now, capacitors can be compared. It can be compared, and we are going to look at comparison of capacitors using one method. There are two methods. I'll simply talk about the other um, method and ask you to research about it. Comparison of capacitors. We have two methods that can be used to compare capacitors. One of them is the vibrating grid switch method. The vibrating read switch method and the other one is the ballistic galvanometer method
I will not say that, uh, that the ballistic galvanometer is very common in exam, um, more than the vibrating grid switch. But I will singularly uh, choose to talk about this one and ask you to read about the other one. Ask you to read about the other one. I told you uh, my teaching exposes my students to a lot of um, research work. Uh, and therefore, I will not give you everything. <coughs> However, I should be able to touch uh, a few parts that should allow you to confidently do the research. Uh, the only difference here is that I cannot uh, look at your researched work and uh, verify that it is okay. So we are going to look at the ballistic galvanometer method. And what we need, we need a DC source. Um, students should be in the know of how diagrams are drawn. So we need a DC, a DC source with a known PD. And uh, we are going to let this PD v, be V. Uh, we need to have um, our provision for the capacitor here, which we can call C. And we need to have uh, our BG or our ballistic galvanometer here. And on this other side, uh, we have two switches. We have a switch on this part, and we have another switch on that part. Now, these switches can be labeled differently. Uh, most teachers or books will use K. K is the common symbol that uh, most scientists use to, to label the switch. <coughs> um, how does this compare the capacitance of a capacitor? Now, this is the capacitor. The capacitor is placed in this region. And then we control the circuit diagram using the switches. Now, with the diagram in position, I have already told you this is a direct current source. Uh, we have the capacitor here. Um, we shall, in our explanation, let the first capacitor. We shall have two cases. So case one, which I will use my capacitor as C1. Much as in the diagram I put C because this is going to be changing. So if I put C1 here, I will close this switch K for sufficiently long. Switch K is closed for sufficiently long. Of course, the time is estimated. And when you close K1, this capacitor is actually being charged. So uh, K1 is closed for sufficiently long. And the capacitor in this position, which we are calling C1, charges. After the capacitor has fully charged, K1 is opened and K2 is closed to allow the capacitor to discharge. When the capacitor has fully discharged, a diffraction or otherwise a throw is seen on the BG galvanometer. This is a meter. A diffraction is seen and this diffraction uh, is interpreted and captured in form of an angle in degrees. So we are going to let the diffraction in the first case be theta 1 when the capacitor is C1. <coughs> uh, that means that we shall obtain an expression that C1 is actually proportional to theta 1. But we shall call this charge. Let us use charge. <coughs> so we shall get an expression corresponding to that as charge 1 is direct proportional to theta 1. And then the process is repeated. Once after you finish discharging, of course, you open the switches again. The process is repeated with replacing another capacitor here, this time CC2, and K1 is closed again for sufficiently long to allow the capacitor to charge fully. After the capacitor has fully charged, K1 is opened, K2 is closed to discharge the capacitor, and when it has been fully discharged, a diffraction is observed here, and this device is calibrated to give us the diffraction of the throw in degrees. Assuming that in the second case, uh, when our capacitor is C2, the charge is Q2, and the diffraction is theta 2, I'm deriving the general expression, 
That implies that if we remove the proportionality, <coughs> we shall have Q1 being equal to a constant times theta 1 and Q2 being equal to a constant times theta 2. When we divide these two expressions, we shall have Q1 out of Q2 being equal to now um, theta 1 out of theta 2. But you are all aware that we have said that charge is CV. So if charge is CV, it implies that on this side, we are having C1V, because remember the supply or the source is the same, over C2V being actually equal to theta 1 over theta 2. And here, the PD will cross or will cancel out, and we have C1 out of C2 giving us theta 1 out of theta 2. Now, since we are comparing, the assumption is always that one of these two capacitors is expected to be a standard capacitor. When we talk about a standard capacitor, we are actually talking about a capacitor whose value is known. So if one of them is a standard capacitor, it implies that you can get the capacitance of the other. Assuming that C1 is required and C2 is standard, then C2 will actually be equivalent, uh, C1 will be equivalent C2 times theta 1 out of theta 2, and its value can be determined. <coughs> so the steps can be captured. Um, I have made the derivation. The explanation must, the equations must come with the wording. Um, that when K1 is closed for sufficiently long, um, with a capacitor in place, um, then K1 is opened and K2 is closed, a deflection will be obtained and equation 1 will be written. Actually, if you have explained the first case very well, for the second case you say the procedure is now repeated with capacitor C2 in position of C and the deflection obtained recorded as theta 2 and then you can generate the expressions and conclude. Remember, to tell the examiner that one of the capacitors is a standard capacitor. Um, from here, I will take you to the derivation of the arrangement of capacitors. We can now move to the arrangement of capacitors and look at capacitor equations. I believe um, that you have captured this and um, you should be able to take this as a reading assignment, the vibrating read switch. Uh, maybe towards the end of this topic, in another lesson, a later lesson, if we still have these lessons moving on, I will be able to, to check whether you actually got things right. A question on capacitors is a very prominent question, and uh, I must mention that it is normally an easy question to pass if one pays attention. The arrangement of capacitors is that capacitors can be arranged in two ways. They can be arranged in series, and they can also be arranged in parallel. They can be arranged in series, but they can also be arranged in parallel. We are going to look at the arrangement in series first. Uh, because I have not discussed electricity with my learners on this platform, I will not, um, uh, I will not so much want to, to jeopardize your interpretations with the, the elevation we are yet to make. So uh, I will keep quiet for now. But I will mention that there is a direct relationship um, between um, capacitors in series and resistors in parallel. Let us assume this is capacitor C1, this is C2, this is C3, and that we have a general supply of voltage V. 
This is supposed to be a DC source. Now, the PD across here <coughs> is going to be V1. The PD across here is going to be V2. And the PD across here is going to be V3. Uh, if this is a positive plate, and this is a negative plate of the source, then the charge on this plate will be positive. The charge here will be negative, And the pattern will repeat until we get the other side. The reasoning is that the plate that is coming from the negative end of the source will be negative for each of the capacitors. And that is why in our definition for capacitance, we talked about the magnitude of charge on either plate of the capacitor. Now, consequently, across each capacitor, we shall have a PD across each. Now, once one understands this diagram and knows this is a series. We are looking at series now, so I can first remove this. Once one understands this diagram and knows that our intention is to get a final diagram where we are looking for C, if all those capacitors are replaced by one single capacitor, that has a capacitance that we, are sh we shall call C, the circuit will remain the same with the same source of supply as V. And of course, the charge will still be, now will become Q. Now, a series capacitor has the same charge flowing through. It has the same charge flowing through, which is Q, because it is a one wire. Series refers to a one wire. The other thing is that uh, both capacitors um, are receiving one charge, but they have a different PD. They have a different PD. So we are going to consider, uh, we are considering three capacitors. We are considering three capacitors. We have labeled them as C1, C2, and C3 are connected in series uh, with one end to the, to the other end. <coughs> they are connected in series end to end with a battery um, of PDV with a source of PD. V. What does that mean? It means that the charges that will be transferred, if we label the ends of our capacitor as A and B, if we label this end as A and this as B, the charges will be transferred from B to A, and ultimately the capacitors on the side of B will become negative and the capacitors on the side of A will become positive. So, when the charges are transferred from B to A, we are saying that um, A carries ultimately a positive charge and B carries a negative charge. Now, um, after mentioning about the charges that will be carried, we will notice that the total PD here on our circuit diagram, the total PD, which is V, is going to be equivalent to the sum of the individual PDs. Um, <coughs> by considering the magnitude and considering the conservation of energy, um, considering the conservation of energy, Figure A will give us that V is equal to actually the sum of the individual PDs 
across across the circuit and uh, since we already know from our previous lesson or even from here uh, that charge was equivalent to, to cv since we already know that we are going to make v the subject um we are going to say but from charge being equal to cv it implies that um uh for for figure b for figure b our v is actually going to be equivalent to q out of c and uh, our v1 consequently will be q out of c1 our v2 will be q out of c2 and uh, similarly our v3 would be q out of c3 so if i substitute in this expression for both v v1 v2 and v3 uh, if i substitute um, in uh, in equation 1 uh, equation 1 i'll get that q out of c is actually equal to q out of c1 plus q out of c2 plus q out of c3 and uh, q is common it is common so if we simplify it um, on this side we factor it out we will stay with that this is is now not physics this is mathematics this q will cancel we stay with the one here and therefore our one out of c is one out of c1 plus one out of c2 plus one out of c3 the standard number of capacitors we use for the derivation is normally three even for resistors however we have a special case that we shall shortly look at so this is the effective the effective um, capacitance expression for a series connection for a series connection however i will mention that there is a common a common mistake and this common mistake starts in all level by the students not by any teacher it starts in all level by the students but it needs to be emphasized by the teachers that once someone is looking for the effective capacitance the examiner wants to get c and not one out of c we are interested in the capacitance not one out of and the expression gives us one out of that implies therefore that a candidate is expected to substitute in this expression but eventually get the effective c now the other consideration here is a special case that we look at when we have two capacitors we call it a special case even in resistors a special case of only two only two capacitors given that we now have the general expression the special case for two capacitors will basically look at if the two capacitors are connected the circuit would just be like like the, the old circuit i'm not going to, to really repeat but for illustration this will be c1 and this will be c1 and c2 v1 and v2 and the derivation will still be the same it will still be the same as we have gone or we have moved with the other one but importantly this derivation will lead us here now uh, the expression will now be c if c is the effective as one out of c1 plus one out of c2 now because these are two we choose to proceed and look for what the final uh, c will be we take the lcm here c1 c2 we divide and get c1 plus c2 i believe all of you know how to do this though i will not take it for granted because as a teacher of mathematics as well 
I know that fractions are a difficult part for most of the students. We are interested in C and therefore C, if you make it to the subject, you will get uh, C1, C2 out of C1 plus C2. That expression, that expression you see is summarized um, the way it is as product over sum. So we say that the effective or the final capacitance is equal to the product of the capacitances, the product of capacitors over the sum of the capacitances. So for a student where you are given only two capacitors, you can actually know that the effective is product over sum. Unfortunately, uh, at A level, we don't have multiple choice questions in this paper. Uh, but at O level, if there are resistors, and it is in section A where they are just giving you answers, you simply use that and take like only one minute to choose the correct answer if you know its advantage. If you don't know the advantage, you do it fully and you spend a lot of time there and um, you lose time on other numbers. Yet, for exam purposes, if a number is supposed to be easier and you know how to easily do it, it should be able to take a short time for the candidate. The parallel arrangement They can ask you to derive these expressions in an exam. Please take note. Parallel arrangement, we can look at our diagram as this. We can look at our diagram as this. Uh, C1, uh, C2, C3. And if this is my positive and this is my negative, all oh, these will be negative. And uh, this would be ne positive, positive. But I want you to notice something unique there that the charges um, are different. The charges are different from the previous one. The series circuit has only one wire connecting. It has only one wire connecting the whole thing. But the parallel circuit has several wires. <coughs> you can draw it like I have drawn it. And if you don't want to draw it like that, uh, you will find most books will draw it in a way that all these connect to one point, uh, which is still the same, still the same diagram. So students should not say that how come this diagram is actually different from the ones we know. Um, this is still the same diagram if these capacitors are labeled again like that. And if this terminal is positive, then these are all negatives, 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 positive, and positive. And this time, they are different. There are different charges on each capacitor. So you must be able to emphasize that. You must be able to emphasize that. Now, with uh, the parallel arrangement, the expression is much easier that the total charge that is being supplied uh, from the source is equivalent to the sum of the individual charges. Here it is Q that is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. It is Q that is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. And uh, I expect that you've completed this bit. I can expand there. And what happens here? What happens is that now that we already know, the effective diagram would still be the same. One capacitor with uh, the source. 
which is now effective and with a total charge. That is the effective diagram and this can be diagram A. So from A, we have that expression which I can call equation uh, 1. And uh, since we know that Q is equal to CV, it would imply that Q1 will be equal to C1V, Q2 will be equal to C2V, and Q3 will be equal to C3V. Um, the unique thing here is that each of these capacitors is supplied by the same charge. They are all being supplied by the same PD, and in resistors, they can be compared with the resistors that are in series instead. Therefore, if we substitute here, we shall have CV being equal to C1V plus C2V plus C3V. And if we factorize our V out, our, C, our CV will be equal to V into C1 plus C2 plus C3. And our C eventually will simply be the sum of the individual capacitances or of each. That gives you the expression for the effective capacitance um, of the, the plate. Uh, we can look at an example on how this formula can be used. And the example gives us a simple diagram here that I can draw. Um, I believe the candidates following this lesson could write uh, this, this number. If uh, C1 is uh, 2 microfarads, C2 is 2 microfarads, and uh, C3 is 1, find the charge stored on each of the capacitors. So they can ask you to find the charge stored on each of the capacitors and hence find the PD across each. Um, the question is very simple. The circuit diagram is clear. Uh, we can attempt to look at the solution quickly and recognize that C2 and C3 are in parallel. How do you recognize that given capacitors are in parallel, you should be able to move from the source. When you move from the source and find a point where there is a separation of charge because assume charge is flowing through that wire. If you find 
that charge reaches a point and separates and you have capacitors you are meeting along the way and again there is a connection where they join then those capacitors that you meet where there is a connection uh, a change in the direction of flow of charge should be considered or confirmed to be in parallel and if they are in parallel and we let say um, C to be their effective maybe C prime uh, we have just seen that we get that effective by simply adding so if it is C2 and C3 we are adding 2 and 3 uh, 2 and 1 to obtain 3 microfarads and uh, this is 3 if you want times 10 to the negative 6 of a farad and they are telling us to find the effective this the find the charge stored on each of the capacitors and the PD. Now this is the effective capacitance. So we proceed. If we have got that, our circuit diagram now changes to this. This is C prime and this is C1. And still it is connected to our supply of 120 volts. And therefore now the diagram is a series circuit. We know these values. This is C prime. So our effective, if I call it C, if we let C be the effective capacitance, we can now have our C, uh, 1 over C. Since there are two, I can use the other formula. That C will be equal to product over sum. C1 C prime over C1 plus C prime. And therefore, we have the product that is one, um, two times now three. They are all multiplied by um, uh, one farad. So it will be times 10, the negative 12 now, over the sum, which is two plus, uh, again, two plus three. Uh, this will be five times 10 to negative six. So our effective ultimately becomes five out of six. Uh, 6 out of 5 micro farad. 6 out of 5 micro farad. But the question as we move towards the end of this lesson, the question is asking us to find the charge uh, on each. So we need to find the total charge. To find the total charge, If I call it Q, Q is equal to CV. So Q will be equal to that effective capacitance of 6 out of 5 times 10 now to the negative 6 times the PD, which is 12, 120. And our total charge, if you compute, uh, this will go here um, in 12, 120. It goes 2 times, uh, keep, that's 24. So we'll get 144 if we keep this as micro it will be micro columns. They want us to find, remember, the charge on each. To find the charge on each will imply that we need to find a PD across here. And uh, if we find the charge on C1, on C1, the charge which I can call Q1 is C1 times the PD across C1, which I can call V1. Charge on C2 will be C2 times the PD, which I can call V in here. So we need to get the PD uh, from, from the expression of charge. We know that PD is equal to charge out of C. So V1 will be equal to the total charge, this V1 here, out of, out of C1. C1 is 2. Micro, micro will cancel. So this will give us 72 volts. So it means that Q1 will become, um, we are saying that our V1 is 72 volts. And ultimately we can get V as this times our total PD. Uh, v will also be 3 times this um, divided by the charge there. Okay, so we can wind up 
by getting the charge across the parallel, the PD will be 120 minus 72. And therefore, Q1 will be C, 2 times 72. Uh, Q2 will be obtained by getting C2 times V, which we have got as the difference between this and that. And then Q3 can also be got by that, where V is the PD across the parallel arrangement. I want to, of course, uh, wind up this lesson by telling you that the charges uh, by calculation, your charge um, uh, Q1, we have got it as 72, as, as 144, the total charge, and then the PD across C1, we have got it as 72. The PD across C2 and C3 is 52, is 120 minus 72, which will be 48. And uh, the charges would definitely be calculated by each student. I want to thank you for attending this lesson and uh, ask you to look for questions similar to the one I've done uh, for our next follow-up lesson. I think the next follow-up lesson will be much more enjoyable uh, with calculation numbers. I want to wish you a nice weekend and ask God to continue blessing you, continue doing your best, and ask God to do the rest. I want you to remember one thing, that if you cannot explain it to a six-year-old child, then you don't know it yourself. If you can't explain it very well to a six-year-old child, you do not know it yourself, says Einstein, one of the greatest scientists that has ever lived. <laughs>